This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 739. A short and uncomplicated guide to reverse dieting by Matt McLeod of mcleodconsultingservices.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Welcome to a Thursday edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is one of five podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself, except on Fridays. That's where I usually answer your questions. Now, before we get to the post, don't forget, we give away a book to a random person on our mailing list every month, plus host 30-day challenges for you to join. So if you want to be in the drawing and participate, make sure you're on our mailing list at oldpodcast.com. I'll give you another quick reminder at the end, but for now, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. A Short and Uncomplicated Guide to Reverse Dieting by Matt McLeod of mcleodconsultingservices.com. Instead of deep diving into every piece of science ever on reverse dieting, metabolism, and a bunch of you don't care about, I'm gonna tell you a story. Let's make up a guy named Chad. Chad's got a pretty fast metabolism, works out a couple times a week, and maintains his weight by eating 2,500 calories per day. These are his maintenance calories. But Chad is trying to get hashtag shredded and wants to lose some body fat. We know to lose fat, he needs to be in a caloric deficit, which means in his case, below 2,500 calories per day. And if you think Chad is gonna be slow and steady with this cutting strategy, you apparently don't know enough dudes named Chad. It's all or nothing, bro. Instead, he decides to aggressively diet by cutting 1,000 calories per day, by eating less food, and adding tons of cardio. Chad could probably do an aggressive cut if he had a coach helping him out, but that is obviously never gonna happen because he's quote-unquote done his research. When Chad does this cut, his body will adapt to the lower energy intake by losing body fat and possibly muscle if he's not eating enough protein and doing resistance training. And his metabolism will slow down, which is normal because the body is trying to preserve as much energy as possible. Fast forward a month and Chad's metabolism has slowed down to maintaining his weight on 1,500 calories per day instead of his initial 2,500 calories. This is just a rough example, by the way. It's been a long month of hardcore dieting, and Chad is sick of this. He wants food, lots of food, because his aggressive dieting has ramped up his hunger. So he starts crushing food each day and eats more than 2,500 calories per day. But his metabolic rate hasn't had time to adjust yet. His maintenance calories are still at 1,500 calories per day, and he's eating at least 2,500 calories per day. This means he's gonna start gaining fat at a very high rate. It's possible he could regain all the fat he lost when dieting for that month-long period, plus even more. This is why people tend to gain even more fat after they've dieted for a long period of time. Think about bodybuilders or actors who dieted for weeks and weeks, finish their competition or movie, and then eat everything in sight. They blow up get sad, start dieting again, and it's a vicious cycle of gaining and losing. But Matt, isn't there a way to prevent people from blowing up after they lose weight and their metabolism slows down? Enter the reverse diet. The reverse diet is exactly what it sounds like. You're doing the opposite of slowly taking away calories to lose weight. Instead, you're slowly adding in calories week to week so that you can match your metabolic rate in parallel as it increases. Yes, this means your metabolism actually gets faster as you eat more food. This is why people get confused when others say eating six small meals a day speeds up your metabolism. Yes, it does, but if you're eating too many calories, you still gain weight. So, here's what Chad should have done. Calculated a calorie deficit. Then, slowly decreased his calories week to week. Doing it slowly allows you to retain more muscle and doesn't ramp up your hunger he should have reduced his calories by 100 to 200 per week, but these would vary by individual. These calories should be decreased mostly from carbs and fats because we want to keep protein high, around one gram of protein per pound of body weight. He should have aimed for half to 1% loss of total body weight per week. Then, once he reached his desired level of leanness and or his diet ended, he should have started a reverse diet by slowly adding in calories by 100 to 200 calories per week. And again, this will vary by individual. I would recommend adding in calories mostly from carbs and protein to begin, then slowly increase fats as weeks go on. 
I can't give broad recommendations for weight regain because it will be largely dependent on how lean Chad is at the end of his diet and how fast he's willing to gain fat. But typically, one half to 1% is a good start. Using pictures and body measurements are other tools I would recommend in addition to the scale. Now here's the kicker. Reverse dieting isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It's typically harder than the dieting part because Chad's ready to eat all the food and he's not getting the reward of being shredded anymore. So he better make sure he's mentally prepared for this. And if you haven't caught on by now, I'm also saying you better be mentally prepared when you plan on dieting down and or use reverse dieting. Some people may lose weight when reversing after a long period of dieting due to lower stress, which leads to less water retention. But others may not be so lucky and have to cope with putting on some body fat. I know you're just gonna think I'm plugging here, but if you wanna diet down the right way and not risk screwing up your metabolism, I say that lightly, you should hire a coach. Long story short, don't be a Chad. You just listened to the post titled, A Short and Uncomplicated Guide to Reverse Dieting by Matt McLeod of mcleodconsultingservices.com. Dr. Neil here again for my commentary. Slow and steady wins the race, right? That's really the key when it comes to losing fat, gaining muscle, getting that body you've always wanted. It's not gonna happen overnight. And I appreciated that Matt mentioned throughout his article that this is a very individual thing. And so he's trying to give recommendations as best he can, but this is, again, a very individual thing. And so you're gonna need to be really good if you wanna follow this at tracking what you eat, make sure you're monitoring your weight carefully. And I love that he mentioned measurements. Far too often, we use the number on the scale as an end-all, be-all of whether we're meeting our goals. And that's simply inaccurate. The number of the scale doesn't really tell you a whole lot. It tells you, yes, how much your total body weighs, but it doesn't tell you how much muscle you have versus how much fat you may have lost or gained or how much water you're carrying. And so it's always a good idea to get what's called a full body composition done. This is where you get measurements taken around your waist and hips, especially. If you wanna know how large your muscles are getting, you can take measurements around some of those body parts like the arms and the calves and things like that. You also get your body fat analyzed. And so as you put on weight or lose weight, you can see between time one and time two whether you're actually gaining muscle or losing body fat or losing muscle and gaining body fat. So a certified coach or a certified trainer, the key word being certified, can help you assess these things. If you don't have time to see a coach or a trainer or you can't afford one, The other way you can tell whether you're gaining or losing the quote-unquote right kind of weight is to see how your clothes fit, especially if your pants or shorts start to fit better, particularly around the waist and hips, you're probably doing the right thing. If, however, they're starting to feel snug again, well, you might be putting on some body fat. All right, before I go, don't forget, we do book giveaways every month to random people on our mailing list. So if you wanna be a part of that, plus be part of our 30-day challenges and more, come by oldpodcast.com and join the weekly newsletter. It's totally free and a great way to show your support. Again, you can join at oldpodcast.com. All right, that wraps up today's episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another Q&A episode and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, And together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.